हेलो व्यूअर्स नमस्कार आप सभी का एक बार फिर से स्वागत है सांस्कृतिक सफर मानुषी के साथ में वेलकम वंस अगेन टू कल्चरल जर्नी विद मानुषी वी आर वेरी फॉर्चुनेट टू हैव विद अस इन द स्टूडियो टुडे द टू टाइम ग्रामी अवार्ड नॉमिनी दी तबला मास्ट्रो पद्मश्री पंडित शॉपुन चौधरी Let us speak with Pandit ji and embark on his journey. Pranam Pandit ji welcome to our studios it's an honor for us to have you here thank, thank you, you. So, thank you for inviting me and say a few words um my first question will be how did this musical journey of yours begin it's a long story um in my household there was no no uh, music uh, at all mm-hmm. but uh my father everybody was in the medical field everybody was medical doctors and probably they also wanted to join that club which i said no um but my father of course he was a medical doctor good doctor but he was very much interested with the uh, fine arts side you know he uh loved music and uh, he himself uh, studied flute with panalal ghosh mm-hmm. and uh, he was a good singer a good composer music composer mm-hmm. um but i i guess it is because of the family pressure mm-hmm. he could not pursue into that he was you know in the medical field but but probably he wanted to see that through me and that's why he was kind of you know pushing me uh, you know doing some music and mm-hmm. stuff like that but uh, our family was big family joint family conservative family mm-hmm. family members did not like that idea mm-hmm. so my father said that every kids are doing something somebody playing soccer or doing painting or or doing some you know drama or something like in the house and if me means me if i play tabla what is wrong so finally they agreed but in one condition the condition was that if my grade goes down in the school if right. if my grade goes down then no more tabla so fortunately it never happened that my grade went down it was always good and that's how uh, i started you know first i started vocal music oh did you okay and in fact i was uh, singing till when i was like 16 17 years mm-hmm. but then i had some tonsil problem mm-hmm. so i had to stop and then fully with uh, tabla because i started tabla uh, when i was 5 okay at the age of 5 so who was your guru and how did you find your guru my guru i didn't have to find my guru my guru came to me oh, you know i think it was probably my last uh, life something good thing i did and so there was some kind of he was actually my father's one of best friend mm-hmm. and uh, and that's what it happened he was a lover of tabla santosh kumar vishwas uh, acharya uh, santosh krishna vishwas krishna vishwas and um, from lucknow gharana mm-hmm. 
he was not a professional tabla player mm -hmm. tabla was his passion his love mm -hmm. he was a banker mm -hmm. he used to work in a reserve bank of india mm -hmm. as a director position mm -hmm. but um, first he, when my father asked him to teach me he was not ready mm -hmm. uh, but then ultimately he did and i have to say that i am very for i was fortunate i am still fortunate and i was blessed and i am blessed that i had such a great great guru beautiful he was not only my guru he was my father figure he was my mentor he was my friend he was everything whatever i am now it was him that is so beautiful because my father he was a very strict disciplinarian mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and of course it was because of him whatever sacrifice he did for me um i am here now but i got everything from my guru okay. so uh, i still you know uh, whenever i am in trouble I always think about him and something happens. <laughs> he shows you the path yeah. even now. <laughs> so yeah. I'm very fortunate. He was not known. He was not famous. Nobody knew. Even when I started playing, you know, at that time uh, when I was like 12, 13 years old, everybody used to criticize that who is your guru? Oh, who is he? Right. But now his name is all over the <laughs> world <laughs> pandit ji you are a masters in economics at the same time you're also a masters in music of course so um what made you choose tabla as your profession and not go for uh, go as an uh, you know choose your career as an economist <laughs> to tell you frankly i never wanted to be a musician uh means that i didn't want to have my career through music mm -hmm. i wanted to love my music and, and i will play music but uh not my career but then uh, you know it's my destiny somebody mm -hmm. was laughing at my back <laughs> and saying that oh yeah okay so in 1969 okay. when Ustad, the great master Ustad Ali Akbar Khan sahab came to Calcutta from United States, and uh, he, I went to see him because I knew him when I was like ten years old. So, so I was to him I was like his kid, mm -hmm. and so I wanted to see him. So I went there, and uh, he was very happy to see me. and then he said so what are you doing nowadays mm -hmm. i said i just finished my masters and i'm looking for doing my phd and uh, that's all then he said are you still playing tabla mm -hmm. and i said oh yeah <laughs> and then he said okay i need to hear you so why don't you come and mm -hmm. play for me this evening so i went and here he was sitting with his instrument and uh, i played with him for maybe half an hour mm -hmm. and uh, and then he said to me that you know my first concert in the festival dance and music festival uh, you are going to play with me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. first it was like a jolt like 800 <laughs> you know the power hit me and i was i said what did you say he said that you are playing you are i'm i'm asking you to play with me i said me he said yes so i said but um, i don't want to ruin your concert <laughs> he said no you will be fine you will be playing and then he called the uh, the you know the organizer and organizer said no he mm -hmm. cannot mm -hmm. mahapurush mishra is going to play mm -hmm. 
And Khan Sahib said, no, I want him to play this first one. The second one will be Shankar Ghosh. But the first one he will play. And he was adamant. Then All India Radio, that concert was relayed. Mm -hmm. Those days they used to relay mm -hmm. from All India Radio mm -hmm. live. Mm -hmm. And so All India Radio people came and said, no, he cannot because he has no gradation. And Sahib said, I don't need any relay, but he is going to play. And that's how I played with him on that night. And I don't know what I played. I don't remember. But what happened after that, my name just got spreaded. That somebody played with, a young person played with Ali Akbar Khan and he played good and this and that. And then I, then Nikhil, uh, Nikhil Banerjee, asked me to play with him, going here and there. And I just got carried away with this scene, um, you know, flying in the airplane, <laughs> staying in the hotel, giving autograph. I said, great, this is, and on top of the getting some money. Yeah. So I got carried away with that. But then when everything kind of subsided, you know, in the summertime, everything subsided, then came to reality, what's going to happen. So I wanted to go back to my PhD program, but it was too late. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I couldn't. So then I decided, well, since I am here, uh, I am going to take that challenge. And I will definitely work hard to reach to that level. And I really did work hard. And uh, and now, <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you have received so many prestigious awards. You are at the stature, and you just mentioned that you're in, 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 not really nobody in your family was in this musical profession. They might have liked music, but they did not choose it as a profession. And your awards that I know of are one is recently last year from the Sangeet. Um, and not not academy, academy. the fellowship award, which they call the Sangeet Ratna Award, mm -hmm. um, and Padma Shri, of course, mm -hmm. uh, we all know. So, after to be uh, at this stature, when you that you do not belong to a musical family, how does it feel? I think I am very fortunate. Now I think I am very fortunate. I am blessed, in the sense that there are. If we look at it this way, there are lots of um, doctors, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. because my family is doctor, right? Mm -hmm. There are lots of um, engineers, mm -hmm. there are tons of <laughs> economists. But I am happy that actually I made it as a tabla player when somebody say my name, people knows me. But there are so many doctors, so many, how many people can remember their name? In that way, I think I am fortunate. But also I want to say that, you know, people used to have this kind of mentality that you are a musician, you cannot survive. That is wrong. That's so good that you're saying this. Yes. Because everybody think you go to medical line or, or computer line or this line, you have no problem. But in order to go in that line, you have to work hard. Work hard. Right? So in the music, also the same thing. You cannot just discriminate music. Mm -hmm. It's the greatest blessing from God. Not everybody can be a musician. That's right. It's yeah. very limited yeah. mm -hmm. because they are blessed. Yeah. So, you know, I, I feel very fortunate and happy that I became a musician. Yeah, and that inspires so many of our uh, young musicians probably mm -hmm. who want to become musicians, but they also are thinking about it, should we or should we not? So no, that, those words they, coming from you. They should not think, only thing they should think is that, that they have to discipline themselves. Mm -hmm. They make sure that, that, that they work hard mm -hmm. and learn properly. You are attached with the uh, Ali Akbar Khan uh, School of Music or mm -hmm. the College of Music mm -hmm. and you are living in the West in the here 
many many years now and uh, but at the same time you are very much attached to the uh, our motherland india as well west bengal so how do you maintain that balance of not just life but musically as well our music at the same time living here teaching students uh, indian classical music the thing is this if you discipline yourself you can do anything you like wow beautiful words yes i have done enough in india over over 30 years of playing in india then i came to this country mm-hmm. and that was also because of ali akbar khan sahab who invited me to uh, join in his college mm-hmm. but my what i my schedule is that i start teaching here from end of february mm-hmm. or beginning of march mm-hmm. till november mm-hmm. after november then i go to usually go to okay. europe mm-hmm. and then from europe come back mm-hmm. after spending time with my family here in during uh, thanksgiving mm-hmm. then i go to india end of november mm-hmm. and then from end of november till uh, end of february i'm in india okay and so every year because i love to play in india because if you don't play in india or don't get that challenge um it's like a food for us wow. playing in india mm-hmm. and why would you say that and this brings to the another question where uh, i know the audience here do you find a difference in the audience in western uh, world whereas in india uh, where we all grew up with that kind of music so how do you see a difference i don't see any difference now okay mm-hmm. i think in the western world even the younger generation mm. are more into music mm. they want to they had gone through all this process before mm. so now they are in a place where they are very happy to um uh, hear indian music or any indian culture you know like painting or literature or dance uh, yoga right. they are they are just absorbing it right mm-hmm. because they like it so when i see the audience in in the western world i don't see the difference between western world and india but the, in india only thing which i see little disturbing uh, mm-hmm. is that the seeing the younger generation mm-hmm. um forgetting their own culture and not really getting into their own culture or their mm-hmm. their music if I, if i look at their music they are all into hip hop mm-hmm. or uh film music uh, which is not bad i'm not but not so much in the classical music So what do you think about these reality shows that are happening nowadays and these young children and they are doing amazing singing or playing uh but do you think this is the right age where they get a lot of fame immediately instantly and how do you think about that In my opinion it's not a right thing to do it's all business mm-hmm. Because what is happening to those kids do we know what is happening where where they are performing what they are doing no so why we have to because after this reality show they get their because they are little kid they are not grown up mm-hmm. so with this fame and all this stuff they get they are getting carried away with that mm-hmm. and they are forgetting their own reality where they are standing after that show is over then they can see that where they are standing and by that time it's too late mm-hmm. that's what is happening right um you are a teacher you are a guru not just attached to the school but also um maybe uh, you have some shishi uh, who are actually learning from you so i want to know our viewers want to know uh what do you expect of a student do you still follow the guru shishya parampara that used to be there but in this fast life how do you think a shishya can be a student uh, can be taught uh, the way you want to 
I think whatever our older generation did, no matter what we are now, the computer or, or so much technology and this and that, but I think they were, they were right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, we are running after mirage. We don't know where we are going. Um, but those days, I do believe in Guru Shishya Parampara very much. I think the bondage between yes. between the uh, Guru and Shishya is very unique and very beautiful. And that's why they used to do a ton, guy, uh, tie the Ganda, which is the acceptance from both sides. Right, but nowadays when I'm seeing tiding ganda, I feel like it's more kind of want. I want this. I want that. I want that. That's why I'm tiding ganda. It should not be in that way. I I think uh, it will be more like giving, and uh, because ultimately when a guru says his student is growing and doing good, it's a guru feels good about it. Of course. And the shisha also feels good. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, shisha, most of the, what I am seeing is they are switching from one guru to another guru. It's like going like a, like a shopping mall. Sometimes they learn from their guru, but denying their name. So what is happening? What will happen later on, they will understand. If, if the Guru was doing right thing and did right, they have to suffer for that. So, um, you know, yes, in the fast life we have, but still Guru Shishya can be there. Uh, it, can you say that, well, is, uh, we are running so fast, so I don't know who is my father? Can you say that? Good analogy, yeah. <laughs> we don't say that. No, I'm, I'm, my father is this. And you are denying your guru. So is that right? So there will be time when you have to face that consequence. Yeah, your guru followed uh, the Lucknow Gharana. Right. And uh, do you strictly follow Lucknow Gharana or no? You are using, of course, um, maybe accommodating other Gharanas as well in your, uh, when you play tabla? See, the, the, this is very interesting question. What you have asked me is, I like to say a few words here. Please elaborate. Yeah. Um, if you want to be a tabla player, you have to know all the tabla player, all the gharanas, st uh, some composition, mm -hmm. in order to get the whole idea, to visualize the the whole mm -hmm. thing in tabla. In the older generation, that's what the norm. Mm -hmm. But then you have your own gharana. You pursue into that. Because when, suppose I am Lucknow, and here I want to play a composition from, say, Banaras mm -hmm. or, or mm -hmm. Farukabad or Ajarara. But in order to play that, you have to know how they use their approaches because every Gharana has a different approach. Mm -hmm. First of all, if you play, say, if I play in Lucknow style Ajarara, mm -hmm. that is not correct. Mm -hmm. At that time, you have to visualize what is Ajara's style, approach, and according to that, you have to play. So, in our generation, we had to learn that to watch what is Ajara's style, what is Farukabad style, what is Banar style, what is Dili style. Mm -hmm. You have to know, and then your own Gharana. Mm -hmm. So, when I am playing nowadays, I usually play concentrate more on Lucknow because there are so many things there. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
but in my own approach because that was the thing which my guru said that don't try to imitate me you mm -hmm. follow me mm -hmm. but you bring your own color yes and i know that you have done so many compositions mm -hmm. so many and uh, so how do you compose what tell us a little bit about your compositions how are they when unique I, they are so unique when i compose something uh, first of all i try to look when <laughs> this how to uh, compose thing like nowadays there is a course which is a composition <laughs> if you go to any um, western uh, university and they teach you how to compose exactly same way my guru used to do that to me he will give me some of the some of the phrases <laughs> and say bring some of the composition say gut make a gut and show it to me tomorrow mm -hmm. i used to do that and then he will rectify that mm -hmm. that this phrase does not match here mm -hmm. you can bring this phrase mm -hmm. so from my childhood i was doing it so over the years when finally i was ready when i showed it to my guru he said you are fine now you can go ahead mm -hmm. and so that's how uh, I learned to compose, you know, mm -hmm. stuff. But I like uh, uh, to compose not beforehand. Okay. Say I am performing right on that time wow. because it's more challenging. <laughs> yes, the improvisation <laughs> right there. Right. Sometimes it does not work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I make a mistake and I accept it. Said that's fine. I'll try again. Such inspiring words that that is also for the students and you know the viewers that if you make a mistake, it's okay, and you rectify it, and then. Well, you, you know, mistake is very good in your life. Yes. If you don't mistake, mm -hmm. how can you rectify yourself? And nobody can say that I never make a mistake or I don't want to make a mistake or I don't make mistake. Here, exactly a guru speaking, the growth mindset that a student should have. <laughs> no, this is exactly. It's the truth, you know. The more I feel good when I make a mistake on the stage. Mm -hmm. Ah, number one, I made a mistake. <laughs> number two, I made a mistake. And then sometimes it happens, no mistake. Mm -hmm. And then I make a intentional music, uh, make a mistake, and then openly say, I made a mistake. Sorry. To the audience, mm -hmm. because in that way, I can control my ego. Mm -hmm. Because ego is the worst thing. Steve Jobs made iPhone, iPad, I, okay. I, it's <laughs> iMac, it's all I, 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 and nowadays that's what I am seeing it. I, 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 I make this, I did this, I did that, who did? So that is ego. As long as you, you have ego, you don't see what is other side because it's such a dark cloud. You cannot see. You cannot, you cannot have that growth. The pearls of wisdom that are coming yeah. out of your mouth. So, is and it's, it's, you know, at this stage of my life, I'm just telling you my truth. Every single day I pray to God, please, do not give me ego. Take that out from my sight. And, and uh, Panditji, you have been playing, you played with so many amazing musicians. You have been so blessed to play with um, the who is who in the uh, Rag Sangeet, as I can say. So if you remember something that you would like to share with our audience, something that you can recollect, which Yes, I I played with a lot of uh, great, great, great musicians. I'm like a, I still feel myself like a little bug. Uh, but I was fortunate to play with the very first time when I played with uh, Ustad Amir Khan sahab. Mm -hmm. And Amir Khan sahab was such a giant at that time. Mm -hmm. And when I played with him, I was so 
nervous that whether I can cope up with it. But when I started playing, what I felt is that tremendous magnetic power from Khan Sahib, uh, Amir Khan Sahib's music, which kind of molded me. Just, I was just listening to him, enjoying, forgot about my ego because I was young at that time. Uh, and I was just quiet and just played with him, a four hours concert. And before that was my tabla solo. Yeah. And uh, then with, with, uh, uh, with Amir Khan Sahib, I was not supposed to play. But it was him who insisted them mm -hmm. that he should play with me. Mm -hmm. But I felt like I was in a heaven. His music was so powerful. Mm -hmm. Just it got just grabbed me, you know. And I was just enjoying playing with him, playing with Vimshanji, uh, playing with Girja Devi, playing with Pandit Jasadji, playing with um, uh, Malika Jun Mansur, uh, and then playing with Ustad Ali Abul Khan Sahib, yeah, Pandit yeah, Ravi Shankar Ji, yeah. Ustad Bulaat Khan Sahib, uh, Pandit Nikhil Banerji, Ustad Amjad Ali Khan, playing with Birju Maharaj Ji, yeah, with dance. So it's a it's a <laughs> honor for me. I was nothing. I I still feel I'm nothing. We are honored to have you here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So what will be your message to the younger generation? Well, the younger generation, what I will tell you guys, you know, you guys are, you have to hold the flag because our time is coming short. You have to hold the flag and in order to do that, you need to work hard. Don't miss, uh, uh, underestimate music. Music is very powerful and do justice to the music. Do not um, insult your guru. Do your work. Listen to your guru, what your guru is saying. Follow and you will be benefited and uh, practice and thinking that's also very important that not only just uh, practicing and playing you know you have to think about it you need to analyze it then you will find your own path and don't try to imitate anybody try to create your own style because music is like a sky it's endless so much is there you just go and grab it that's my uh, saying to you guys because you guys are very talented in our time uh, the talent was not that much but we definitely work hard but without working hard you cannot do anything in your life, whether you are a musician or doctor or, or engineer or, or computers. <laughs> so you have to work hard and, and just be with music, just love it. Don't try to use music. This is one thing is very important. Don't try to use music means that, oh, well, I have a concert. So tonight I have to practice because I have to show. Nothing you can show to music. So in order to be a musician, you need to surrender yourself to the to music. Wow, then the music will come to you. So okay. just remember those these things, and you'll you'll make it. Thank you so much, Thank you. Ji, for Thank coming you. to our studio and you. Uh, saying those <laughs> beautiful words. Uh, Thank you. And going on, let us going on your journey. Thank, Thank you. God bless you. And with that, we come to the end of this episode. We'll see you again in another episode of Cultural Journey with Manishi. Till then, Namaskar.